Hey, thanks for being a part of the conversation. Let's do some pod crashing. Episode number 269 is with Sarah Wayne Callies from Aftershock Season 2. Oh, I'm great. I'm great. Thank you for taking the time to chat with me. Oh, my God. Well, we were together during the, the first uh, season, and I, I was so uh, inspired by it. And then I, then I got addicted to the podcast, and then it came to an end. And, of course, the, the, the listener in me is going, why do you do this to me? Now I have to wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it was a long wait. I'm sorry. It took us... Um, you know, our actors were so busy with their brilliant careers that, you know, we'd lose somebody for six months. We'd lose somebody for four months. So instead of coming out a year later, I think it's almost two years later. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I'm sorry for that. But you know what, though? Now that it's back, it doesn't feel like that two uh, two years. I mean, it really is. It's like, OK, that was just last week. And and that's what I love about how you just pick right back up with the storyline and you give the, the followers and they need to come back and get back on that trail. Because, I mean, you do a fine job in connecting dots. Oh, good. Thank you. You know, I listened to the entire first season a few times before I started writing season two, because I, I just wanted to make sure, you know, it's I'm the only one. Right. I, I, I'm i a writer's room of one. And I was sitting there going, I really could use help. I would love a story <laughs> editor and someone to go, hey, don't forget about the fact that Wayne said this in episode five. And, you know, Michaela did this. And, um, and I, you know, look, as season two comes out. There is a part of me that is quietly terrified that I've forgotten something yep. and that some fan is going to, you know, DM me at some point and go, hey, um, said with peace and love, <laughs> this person died and now they're talking. You'd be like, oh, man, I thought I got that right. We'll see. <laughs> I took big swings. We'll see if they all could die. That's what I love about the continuity of writing is that when you do bump into moments like that, it's like, okay, well, okay, I'm going to take that off the shelf, but I'm going to keep this as a collector's item because somebody captured it. You know, it it also really is a moment of recognizing, hey, people are engaging. Yeah. You know, people are, I mean, there were a couple of people last year who sent me fan art about the show. <laughs> and I can't tell you how much that mattered to me. I was like, I've had fan art from <clears throat> characters I've played that other people have written, but there's something real special when it's as humble as a podcast. And you're just like, thank you for caring enough. And even the people who, you know, kind of snap at you online about like, I don't like this, I don't like that. And I was like, you might not, but you were listening. And thank you for that. Yep. I'll take the W. You have to take the high road, don't you? Because I mean, when, when they do reach out to you and they, they say things, you can't let it poison your heart at all. No. And you know, that's a, that's a really tricky part of what we do um, as actors or writers or directors. You know, we're, we have to be creative enough and passionately engaged enough that we care deeply, mm -hmm. but not so sensitive to other people's feedback that their rejection breaks us. It's a very, very fine line uh, to walk. And I, you know, I don't read reviews um, because it's just not good for my right, head. Right. But I remember somebody saying to me once, you know, I, someone had told me, oh, are you upset that so-and-so said such and such? And I was upset. And they said, well, you can't take it personally. And I said, but taking it personally is what I do for a living. Like, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the job of an actor is to take words that mean nothing to you and to and make them personal. And so, you know, it is a it's a dance. But the more I do it and the more I'm landing on the writing and directing side, the more I just I realize there's a lot of content out there. If you have taken your time to give your attention to a project I'm involved in. Right. I'm going to be grateful for that. And we're going to let the rest go. <laughs> See, I, lo I love your ideas because I've been known to write letters to people that have criticized. And I said, OK, what are your ideas? You know, I'm going to I'm going to start sending you emails of who I'm going to be talking with or what I'm going to do. Give me your ideas, because I would love to include you somehow, some way in this project so so that I do get it right. Because I, I'm just I, I never went into this project saying I was perfect. I'm nowhere near perfect. Mm -hmm. And now do you ever hear back from people? Because I, do. I will say. What I what I've experienced uh, is interesting that especially on social media, when somebody says something sharp and mean, and they don't do that to me often, I'll be honest. Uh, my social media tends to be full of pretty kind, lovely people, but every now and again, someone will kind of you know decide that they want to smack someone down, and today it's you. <laughs> when I address them directly, you know, um, someone reached out to me on on Twitter, which I'm no longer on. Uh, but they were like, you know, you should have said this about that. You know, I, why are you silent about this issue? And I reached back out and I said, I hear your pain and I, I, I hear that you're hurting. And I hope that you find some peace with that. 
they wrote back and apologized. Yes. Uh, yep. 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 And I think sometimes people just forget, like, there's a human with a beating heart receiving what you're throwing out there. Um, what do people do with you when you when you write to them? Um, the, the the I'm sorry letter is is what I usually get back, and then but if anything, it it builds up a relationship because I'll be that guy at at nine or ten o'clock at night that'll go, hey, I haven't heard from you in a while. How's everything going? And so I I try, I try to wow. you know, build up that relationship in the way of saying, hey, uh, by the way, I was just thinking about you. Um, I got this coming up in the next couple of days. I just want you to know about that because to me, it's 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 always about if if I lose this listener, who am I, who am I going to lose again and again and again and. And, mm. you know, and it's like, man, I, I want long term out of this as much as I can get. Well, and, you know, our ability to be there for each other and be human for each other, yeah. I think, is of paramount importance right now. And I like not to like circle this back to obviously, but I actually wrote the second season of Aftershock as an exploration oh. of atonement and forgiveness and civility, because I <laughs> this is going to sound nuts, but I actually think it's almost like. A, like a national security emergency mm -hmm. our inability <clears throat> that's the wrong word our consistent choices to be aggressive and unkind with each other when instead we could be civil and patient i'm not saying agree with everyone because we're never going to all agree but i remember when i was growing up uh, my parents had friends they didn't agree with politically religiously yeah. however but they still came to our dinner table we still broke bread. We still found ways to laugh together and find that common ground in community. And I'm really worried about uh, about that just eroding away. I forgive you. Let's move on. Or I can't forgive you, but let's move on. Or I don't know what to do with this either, but I will sit with you as a human being uh, and we'll try and survive this together. Yeah, as long as we don't ghost each other. That's that's the thing about it. And I'll and I'll bring that up in more conversations. I I'll, I'll say, hey, things aren't even right now, but but I don't want to turn this into a moment where where we no longer speak together. We we got to figure this out. What is the solution? Let me hear your side first, and let's let's build upon this. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Absolutely. And it, you know, this is it's a. I th I think this is not just tangentially related, but my husband had an interesting experience recently. He was at a music festival with our son and our dog and some guy didn't like the dog hmm. um, and got in his face and like kept taking steps closer. Mm -hmm. My husband's not the kind of guy who's going to take steps backwards. So pretty soon they're kind of <laughs> nose to nose. My husband's super calm. This guy's had a few, you know what I mean? Like he should have been cut off. And then around the corner comes my son who's nine and my husband goes, Hey buddy, puts his arm around him and they walk off together. And my husband's telling me the story. And I was like, well, I'm glad that this isn't the day that my son saw his dad in his first fight. And he goes, no, 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 wait for it. He goes, 10 minutes later, the guy finds me at my campsite and apologizes. Yep. I'm sorry I got aggressive with you. That was inappropriate. I apologize. My husband puts his hand out and he goes, no problem, brother. They shake, they walk away. Yep. And I was like, we need more of that. We need more. Hey, I blew it. That was not the person I wanted to be in that moment followed by don't worry about it we've all been there yeah yeah and, and you know what and i think that's what aftershock season two is going to provide it's going to provide that escape in the way that people are in their car they're in their office they know they've got something wrong in their life they can't pinpoint it directly but you're going to give them that opportunity to see that kind of that little bit of a struggle or conflict and how do you work it out in, in your storyline versus how they're going to work it out in their storyline that's the idea, you know, because season two, look, this is, again, it's the story of westward expansion. And I'm trying to write in women and people of color. And that means that there's there's fights over land. There's yeah. fights over resources. There's fights over water. There's fights over all kinds of things. And these are all things we feel really, really, really passionately about. And, uh, and yet in that moment, there are still opportunities for people to go... Oh, I am going to <laughs> dig deep for a kind of grace that, yeah. quite frankly, I don't want to give you. <laughs> like, I may have clenched fists and clenched teeth, but I am going to be a better person right now than I want to be. Because if I'm not, we're not getting out of this alive. Mm -hmm. You know, like it really feels like those are the stakes right now. We got to get civil like it's an Olympic sport. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, your, your first episode of the season, I mean, the ship explosion and then a face from the past. And I, I laughed at that only because it's like, why is it that I see this face? I, I can't see this face, but I know I see this face. It's a podcast, dude. You can't really see the face. <laughs> you can't see anything. I, you know, we do have conversations. Me and Jeff Schmidt is our uh, audio designer, our audio engineer. And I think he's the best in the business. The man's a genius. Um, and there are times where I will write something and he'll just write back you don't forget this is audio. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'll be like, yeah, yeah. Cassie blushes. He's like, Sarah, I can't create an audio cue for blushing. And I was like, right, right, right. I'm so okay. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This gets so, you know, he's, the guy's a magician. So I was like, you can do anything. He's like, I can't write blushing and I can't make the audience see someone's face. I was right. like, okay, okay. So they're running and they trip over a rock and there's a little rock slide. He's like, I can give you a rock slide. Um, yeah, there's, you know, that's the other thing I think is that when people have done things as bad as all of our characters have done by the end of episode one, I think you're as haunted by your own guilt and ghosts and your imagination of this person that I've wronged is gonna come around the corner at any second. Um, I think we I think we litigate these things over and over and over again in our minds and in our hearts. Mm -hmm. And in some ways we uh, we torture ourselves in ways that no one else ever would. Um, and I think Cassie's got a lot of that going on this season. Yeah. A lot of like seeing Wayne's face around every corner, expecting him yeah. everywhere, despite the fact that she saw him blow up on a boat. Um, sorry, spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> if, you, if you haven't heard season one, that may or may not make sense. But, you know, it's we are haunted. We are haunted by the living and we are haunted by the dead. But see, that's the part I'm talking about, how we can relate with these characters, because like you said, we all are haunted. We all are a Cassie. And then you bump into a Wayne. And, and I mean, we, we can get into this because there's someone in our life that is playing this role already. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's, <clears throat> you know, I mean, so I wrote season one before the pandemic. I obviously wrote season two after the pandemic. And so, you know, we're all carrying scars, yep. right, of what this isolation did to us what this giant debate over vaccines did to us what what being apart from each other did to us what not trusting our neighbors did to us we're carrying these scars and i think the question is what do we do with them we shut down or we open up we work on healing or we work on judging other people um and you know i think what a lot of us did in that pandemic is shed some folks and sometimes it's for good reason and sometimes it's not. But sometimes there are people in our lives, like Wayne, who you think are in your life to help you. And you realize are only in your life to help themselves. Mm. Uh, and I think one of the things that Cassie experiences, and I wrote this in because I do, is a deep question of your own uh, character judgment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can I trust myself to let the right people into my life after I've made a mistake and let somebody in who's so dangerous? Mm -hmm. um, and I think we've all been there, you know, where you, it's that moment where all of a sudden you feel like you're on a boat, everything feels unsteady and you're like, oh my gosh, this is not a, a deeply caring, loving person. This is somebody who has been manipulating me and I've been too blind or dumb or trusting or whatever to see it. See, those uh, are those are the moments that we personally have those conversations with ourselves going, I don't know, dude, I don't know, you, you, this is dangerous. Yeah, I don't think your heart is strong enough this time around. Yeah, yeah, well, and you know, it is interesting because the heart I think is a much stronger muscle than we give it credit for. And maybe one of the beautiful things that came out of the pandemic, if there are any, is that we did realize that there is a level of resilience um, we can go through some pretty crazy stuff and come out the other side, right? Absolutely. And uh, the idea is to come out the other side a better person. Um, and, you know, we're all working on that. But uh, but it's, it's, it's hard. Um, it's hard to not lose your faith in yourself. Mm hmm mm hmm this this is screaming for an af a follow up show and after the show. In other words, it's like it's like you release a, a, an episode and then there's a podcast where it's people that are talking about it, how they're breaking it down, their interpretation. I mean, if you don't do it on this season, you've got to do it for season number three because at that, at that point in time, everybody is built and they're in play. 
that's a really interesting idea, actually. Um, you know, we do round tables every season with the actors, just kind of talking about like, you know, what did you think when you got these scripts? And, you know, this year I actually, um, Tati Gabrielle especially, uh, because she's just, you know, she's super brilliant and really interested in writing and directing. And she had come to me and she said, hey, will you be my mentor? And I said, boy, do I ever not feel smart enough to do that. <laughs> yeah. um, but what I'd love to do is break the season with you. Yeah. And so we talked together a lot about story and about themes. Um, I ran the whole season by Janelle and I was like, is there anything that you want to see or don't want to see? You know, we're trying to make it a little more collaborative than just my writing room of one. And so we talk, you know, in our bonus episodes every season about like, what was that process like? And what did we learn working together? Um, you know, a couple of friendships have been made, people who didn't know each other before who are now quite close, which is really beautiful. Um, but I, I would love to have a sort of listener forum yeah. to just sort of hear how it's landing with people and how people feel about these various things that I'm trying to explore. Um, but of course, you know, you never know until it's out there. Oh my God, did I miss the mark? Yeah. Or was I trying to aim north, but I ended up west? <laughs> um, <laughs> Am I am I landing these things? And this, I took real big swings this year, um, and I had an interesting experience, which is I. There's a lot of uh, there's a sort of increased presence for the Hawaiian characters, um, and there's a new Hawaiian character in a larger community this year. And I reached out to uh, a woman that I have gotten to know um, over the years, who's very much an activist and a, a really extraordinary. Uh, voice for the Kanaka Maoli, the native Hawaiians in Hawaii. And I said, you know, Auntie, would you listen to some of these episodes and just let me know what I'm doing nice, wrong? Nice, nice. Um, because I don't, you know, I'm writing for a community. I grew up in Hawaii. I speak Hawaiian, but I'm not Hawaiian. And and uh, I could use some kokua. I could use some help. And she listened. And we spoke and she said, um, so I appreciate what you're doing but I have a premise question for you. Ooh. And I said, okay, hit me. She goes, so Lei is our Hawaiian character. She's a Pacific Islander who paddles up to a Pacific Island, this new island. She claims it in the name of her people. She goes, but that island is 13 miles away from California and 2,000 miles away from Hawaii. <laughs> and she's talking and my stomach is turning to water. <laughs> and she's like, it's not too late to fix it. And I go, oh no, auntie, it is. Season one came out. And she goes, oh, okay. <laughs> um, and so in my mind, I start rewriting season two because I'd written half a season two. And I was like, okay, you know what? Let's make this the character's dilemma. Let's have lay this season realize I did something thinking it was the right thing, yeah, but it wasn't the right thing. So how do I make this right? So this is a part of our theme in season two of atonement, apology, and forgiveness. And it said, I called Janelle and I was like, hey, this is the character that you've been playing and this is what's going on. And so we we made it a story about like, hey, sometimes you try and do the right thing or the wrong thing for the right reasons. And then, and then there's a choice, right? Wow. You can dig in your heels and get defensive or you can go okay let me let me make this right let me make this right so you know i sent a bunch of things back and forth to auntie and was like what if we do this what if we do this what if we do this Can, you know how about this and she helped me craft a solution wow to a problem that i had written myself into um and it so it, it was it was a it was a serious moment you know i got off that phone call and I turned to my husband and I was like, I blew it. I really blew it. <laughs> and he goes, okay, write yourself out. I was like, That's okay, it. I'm going to write myself out. Oh my God. Um, yeah, it's going to be intense. I don't know when those episodes come out, there might be people who are like, you're an idiot. Be like, sure am. <laughs> yes, I am an idiot, in fact. But I'm doing my best. You got to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always, always going to be open for you. Oh, thank you so much for having me. This is a great conversation. I really appreciate it. Well, looking forward to season three as well. But I'm going to patiently go through this one because now you've given me something to look forward to in the way of going, oh, I know the story. She told me. <laughs> <laughs> You'll know it when you hear it. <laughs> You'll know it when you hear it. Well, you be brilliant today, okay? Thank you. You too, my friend.